In this lecture, we will continue our discussion on filtering and its relation to convolution and we will build upon the discussion that we did in the previous lecture and now we will discuss other types of filters such as high pass filter, band pass filter and notch filters and in previous lecture we have already discussed examples of low pass filter. Before we start our discussion, let us do a quick recap. So we have seen till now that filtering can be described as convolution operation in time domain where we take the input signal u of t and convolve it with the impulse response function of the filter and impulse response function denoted by h of t is characteristic of the filter. Because convolution is not so straightforward to understand, it is easier to understand the filtering process in the frequency domain because convolution in time domain is equivalent to multiplication in frequency domain where we multiply the Fourier transform of the input signal with the Fourier transform of the impulse response function of the filter and the Fourier transform of the impulse response is called the transfer function denoted by capital H of omega. In the previous lecture, we looked at the example of an ideal low pass filter which can be designed by choosing the transfer function of the form of a rectangular function in frequency domain and this transfer function when you multiply it uh, with the Fourier transform of the input signal in frequency domain then it cuts off all frequencies having a magnitude greater than omega c because h of omega takes on zero values for frequencies whose absolute values are greater than omega c and for all frequencies having magnitude less than omega c they pass through unchanged because h of omega is equal to 1 within the range minus omega c to omega c. That is how we have seen that the low pass filter works and we also saw in the previous lecture that filtering with the low pass filter can also be thought of as convolution in time domain where the impulse response function h of t is the inverse Fourier transform of the transfer function h of omega and therefore it is a sync function. More specifically h of t that is the impulse response of the ideal low pass filter we have seen in the previous lecture is given by omega c over pi where omega c is the cutoff frequency times sync omega c times t and recall that the sync function is defined as sin x over x. So we have already seen in the previous lecture how an ideal low pass filter can be constructed by designing the transfer function and we then saw a practical example of low pass filter. So now let us look at the example of an ideal high pass filter. The ideal high pass filter is exactly opposite of the ideal low pass filter. That means it allows all frequencies above a cutoff frequency, let's say omega c, to pass through unchanged. Therefore, the, the transfer function takes on a value of 1 when omega has an absolute value greater than omega c and it eliminates all other frequencies having an absolute value less than omega c. So here it takes on zero value in the range minus omega c to omega c. As you can see this is exactly opposite of what an ideal low pass filter is. Therefore the transfer function of the high pass filter which will denote as high of omega with a capital H because this is the Fourier transform of the impulse response of the high pass filter 
So that's why uh, following our notation, we'll denote it with a capital letter. And this can be written in terms of the transfer function of the low pass filter. So we can write this as 1 minus h of omega. Therefore, the impulse response of the high pass filter is given by the inverse Fourier transform of the transfer function. So note that when we design these filters, we begin by designing the transfer function because it's easier to think of filtering as multiplication in frequency domain as opposed to convolution in time domain. So we begin by designing the transfer function and then to get the impulse response, we take the inverse Fourier transform of that and this is equal to 1 minus h of omega. And again, using the linearity property of the Fourier transform and the inverse Fourier transform, we can write this as this. And recall that the inverse Fourier transform of 1 is actually the delta function because the Fourier transform of a delta function is equal to 1 and the inverse Fourier transform of h of omega that is the transfer function of the low pass filter is actually given by h of t where h of t is this function. So this is the impulse response of the high pass filter. So essentially it's a delta function minus the impulse response of an ideal low pass filter. So now if we take a signal u of t and convolve it with the impulse response of the high pass filter, we can see that we get u of t convolved with delta of t minus h of t and this is equal to so convolution of a function with a delta function gives back the original function therefore we have u of t if we take convolution of u of t with the Dirac delta function and the second term is the convolution of the signal with the impulse response of an ideal low pass filter. If we substitute the expression of h of t we can write this as u of t minus and we can substitute the expression of h of t from here and we get this convolution integral. So this equation shows that the high pass filter simply subtracts that part of the signal having frequency less than omega c and that is this part from the original signal that is the high pass filter is exactly opposite of an ideal low pass filter. That means if we had an input signal u of t and we filtered it using a low pass filter, this is what we would have got. That is the convolution of the signal with the impulse response h of t. But if we have a high pass filter, then that filtered signal that we would get from the low pass filter, that is this one, we subtract from our original signal and that is what a high pass filter gives us. And high pass filters are used uh, in instruments which have very low frequency noise or drift. And a common example that comes to my mind is that of an accelerometer where you measure acceleration but there is a very low frequency drift in the accelerometer which uh, you need to remove particularly when you need to integrate 
acceleration signals to get velocities and position because if that low frequency signal remains in your acceleration measurements and you integrate once to get velocity or integrate another time to get position then that low frequency component will lead to erroneous prediction of velocity and position so recall that in the previous lecture we have seen that an RC filter that is given by this circuit having a resistor with resistance R and a capacitor with capacitance C and we saw that if we give an input voltage signal of U of T and measure the voltage across the capacitor then the voltage across the capacitor is actually the convolution of the input signal with the impulse response of this RC filter and the impulse response of this RC filter was an exponentially decaying pulse such as this. So the same filter can also be used as an high pass filter. So note that instead of measuring the voltage across the capacitor as our output signal if we measure the voltage drop across the resistor then that voltage drop would be this total voltage drop that is u of t minus the voltage drop that we had across the capacitor that is the convolution of the input signal with the impulse response of a low pass filter. So this is what this voltage drop across the resistor is and if we compare this equation with this equation over here we see that if we measure voltage drop across the resistor then this RC circuit will act as a high pass filter because we take the original signal u of t and we subtract that part of the signal which we will get as an output of the low pass filter. So the opposite of the low pass filter is the high pass filter. So having discussed the low pass and high pass filters let us move on to another type of filter called the band pass filter and in particular we look at an ideal band pass filter. As the name suggests the band pass filter allows frequencies in a particular band to pass through unchanged and eliminates all other frequencies in the signal. That means if we look at the transfer function of the band pass filter which we denote by capital B of omega then it should allow frequencies that are in a particular band to pass through unchanged. So the transfer function for a band pass filter should look like a rectangular function that has been shifted so that let's say if this transfer function is a rectangular function that is centered around omega naught and this we can cutoff frequency can be given as omega naught plus omega c and this cutoff frequency on the left hand side is omega naught minus omega c. And note that we are dealing with real signals so if we try to represent real valued signals in terms of complex exponentials as we do in Fourier transforms then we will also have negative frequencies and therefore when we design this band pass filter we should also allow frequencies that are negative but still have magnitude between this range omega naught minus omega c and omega naught plus omega c to pass through. Therefore we have another rectangular function over here that is centered at minus omega naught and these frequencies are minus omega naught 
minus omega c and minus omega naught plus omega c. So the bandpass filter will allow frequencies within this range and this range to pass through unchanged and will zero out all other frequencies in the input signal upon multiplication with this transfer function with the Fourier transform of the input signal. The transfer function of an ideal bandpass filter can therefore be described by this equation that is the transfer function takes on a value of 1 if the absolute value of the frequency lies in this range and otherwise it takes on a zero value. We call this filter as an idle filter because there is a sharp cutoff for frequencies that do not lie within the range of omega naught minus omega c and omega naught plus omega c. So now if we want to think of this filtering using the bandpass filter in time domain, then we need to take the inverse Fourier transform of the transfer function to get the impulse response of the bandpass filter. And the inverse Fourier transform of the transfer function B of omega can be easily found if we consider that the transfer function for the bandpass filter can be expressed in terms of the transfer function of an ideal low pass filter which we call look like a rectangular function centered at zero frequency and have sharp cutoff at minus omega c and omega c. So therefore this b of omega can be written in terms of the transfer function for the low pass filter by shifting the rectangular function centered at 0 by omega naught. So we have h of omega minus omega naught and we have another part on the left hand side so we'll add another rectangular function and this time we'll shift it towards the left by frequency of omega naught. And we already know the inverse Fourier transform of h of omega that is the impulse response for an ideal low pass filters and we can use the properties of Fourier transform to actually come up with the impulse response for an ideal bandpass filter if we express the transfer function for the bandpass filter in terms of what we already know that is the transfer functions for an ideal low pass filter. So now we see that B of T that is the impulse response for the ideal band pass filter is given by the inverse Fourier transform of B of omega that is equal to the inverse Fourier transform of the first term over here and then the second term. And recall the frequency shift property of the Fourier transform that said that if we take a function h of t and multiply it with a complex exponential with the frequency omega naught then its Fourier transform shifts in frequency domain by frequency omega naught. Therefore the inverse Fourier transform of h of omega minus omega naught is simply the inverse Fourier transform of h of omega times e to power iota omega naught t. Similarly for the second term over here we can write this as e to power minus iota omega naught t times the inverse Fourier transform of h of omega and the inverse Fourier transform of h of omega is the h of t that is the impulse response for an ideal low pass filter.
Therefore, the impulse response for an ideal bandpass filter is given by h of t times e to power iota omega naught t plus e to power minus iota omega naught t and this is simply 2 times the impulse response of an ideal low pass filter that is h of t times cosine omega naught t and recall that h of t was omega c by pi times the sinc function therefore b of t is given by this so the impulse response of an ideal bandpass filter given by this equation over here is shown in this figure where this function b of t has been plotted for omega c equals to 1 and omega naught equals to 10 that is the corresponding transfer function looks something like this. Now clearly this function b of t that is the impulse response of an idle band pass filter looks way more complicated than this very neat looking transfer function of an idle band pass filter. Therefore if you visualize filtering as multiplication in frequency domain as this it is much easier to look at multiplication of the Fourier transform of the input signal with this transfer function over here as opposed to visualizing filtering as convolution of the input signal with this very complicated looking function b of t and it is interesting that if you take convolution of this strange looking function in time domain it neatly removes frequencies that are outside this interval that is in this particular region but that is more easily understood in frequency domain rather than in time domain and that explains the importance of studying Fourier transforms and the convolution theorem. So bandpass filters can be useful again in experiments where let's say we have an accelerometer where we need to remove low frequency drift that is present in instruments such as accelerometers and we also need to remove high frequency noise that occurs due to randomness in the experiment. So lastly we look at another type of filter that is called the notch filter and we look at the ideal form of this notch filter. The notch filter is essentially opposite of a bandpass filters. That is, we can describe its transfer function as 1 minus the transfer function of a bandpass filter. So an ideal notch filter eliminates frequencies that have magnitude in the band omega naught minus omega c and omega naught plus omega c that is the transfer function will take on a value of 0 for these frequencies and the transfer function will be 1 otherwise and the transfer function for the notch filter is opposite of 
the band pass filter and we'll have something like this that is 1 minus the transfer function of a band pass filter so now if we look at the impulse response of the notch filter it is given by the inverse Fourier transform of the transfer function and that is equal to inverse Fourier transform of 1 minus the transfer function of a band pass filter and we already know the inverse Fourier transform for the band pass filter and therefore we'll have delta of t minus b of t where b of t is the inverse Fourier transform of capital B of omega that is b of t is the impulse response of the band pass filter and recall that this was equal to 2 times omega c over pi times sink of omega c t times cosine of omega naught t so once we have the impulse response of the ideal notch filter we can see that the output signal that is output of the notch filter is simply the convolution of the notch function over here in time domain with the input signal u of t and this will be equal to the convolution of u with the Dirac delta function minus b of t so again we have u of t because convolution of function with the Dirac delta function gives back the function and we have to subtract the original input signal with the signal that would otherwise come out from a band pass filter so the opposite of the band pass filter is the notch filter the notch filter simply subtracts this part from the original signal and this part is the part in which the frequencies in this range shown in red have been removed by a band pass filter so what we have seen in this lecture is that you can design filters by designing the transfer function in frequency domain and designing transfer function or choosing a transfer function is much easier than the impulse response of the filter because filtering is essentially multiplication in frequency domain and this multiplication is much simpler than visualizing convolution in time domain.